Holy ants! What are you guys doing down there? Whee! Buenos dias, amigos! Ooh. Did we get that last night? I suppose it's probably a good thing this bag of oats that is full <laughs> got left outside in the rain. Dad should be here in a minute. We'll hop in the sprayer here in a little bit, but first we got to do a little bit more on this semi-trailer. We're going to pull this over to the water tank. And then we also need to do something special with this tank. Dad, are we ready to make things grow and be healthier? I think so. Gasoline. Battery's dead. I turned the nozzle right away. This tank has a solution in it that settles out to the bottom. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna use the air compressor on the semi, run an air hose back here, we're gonna stick a wand inside of there, and we're just gonna blow air in the bottom of it and it'll stir it all up. Ugh. Okay. Here goes nothing. Whoa, look at that, it's gold! It's oil! Well, that works really good to stir it down in. Well. Once we get a little out of it. It's really full. And, oh, that smells terrible. <laughs> it's like gag reflex. <laughs> oh, that is bad. Oh, boy, that stuff was strong. Literally smells like a fish tank that hasn't been cleaned in forever. And then the fish died like three years ago, still in the tank with all their algae and all that grossness. And then having that like right here, that's what it smells like. I'm putting my mask on next load, like my, my big 3M mask, my P100 guy. We got coal out spraying and we got a couple young men here. Looks like they're delivering 32% nitrogen. We're hoping if everything goes good today, we will be able to start wide dropping and we need 32% and it looks like they brought us a couple loads down. Cooper planted some new seeding here yesterday in a little chunk, trying to keep it moist every day, so hopefully the little boogers will grow. Cooper's heading off. He's gonna go down and get the little John Deere tractor and the column mulcher or whatever. He's gonna go, they seeded some of the ground over here last night, I don't remember, they said five or six acres. So he's gonna try to get that packed down. It's just rolling up on noon now. I got my third load off. It's a little slower. I have to go about eight miles an hour, seven and a half or so. Dad is gonna be popping over that hill any second now. I believe he has pizza. We're having that for lunch. While we're sitting here. We might as well get the monitor programmed into where we need to be. We are at the bush farm. We're making a new event. Fill the tank up. There we go. Oh, speaking of him, there he is. Coming down the road. That's the Hanson farm, by the way. We're just on the other end of the mile. So kind of what our idea is, we are taking the areas of the field that have the highest fertility. Usually there's certain parts of the field that the soil is better than others. So I'm essentially just looking at our past yield maps, finding the areas that yielded the highest, like 30 bushels higher than all the other areas of the field. And we're just, we're basically spot applying on those areas. And in a lot of our fields, honestly, it, it kind of splits it right in the middle because years ago, when they had their pig lot there or their cattle lot, and they went out and put manure on, they just kind of put it in the same areas time after time after time after time for 30 years. So the fertility is way built up on those areas. 
I feel we can get more a bang for our buck in the super fertile areas because we have everything synergistically working together versus the areas that are deficient. Then once we know stuff works on the high fertility areas, then it's a matter of building the low fertility areas up. I'm honestly, we're probably low all the way around. I honestly probably don't even know what I'm talking about, but that is, that's our theory. There he is. Ah, I see he professionally truck strapped that bad boy down. <laughs> oh, look at that. We got cheeses, we got hot stuff. Did you get orange juice? Yeah, for me, I can drink orange juice at times. You want orange juice? So no, you know. no, I don't. I'll take the water. Yeah, and I do have more water in the cooler. I still have that one smell in my nose. That's like that. Back like 200 years ago when like an elephant fell in one of them hot lava oil... I don't know what you call it. Uh, sinkhole. Ah, it just reeks. Calling it a night, I guess. I was gonna say he doesn't have very long. His legs are going numb and they're, well, they're hurting, they're swelling up bad. When that happened to my grandpa Ray, he passed away 12 hours after he started getting leg pain, so. I'll be back later. I don't know. I don't know when this is gonna come out. Yeah, we can go grab it. Were you eating pepperoni pizza? <laughs> Guess Grandpa John's coming along today to show us how to run things. Hey, right, you gonna teach me how to run this thing? I don't know how to drive a John. Dude. Got the buddy seat ready for you. It's not quite a lazy boy, but no, <laughs> better than the old Massey Ferguson's we used to have, where you sat up in the corner and every time Dad would shift and didn't tell you, you'd smack your head against the window. So I have a flat spot on the back of my head. <laughs> All right, Grandpa, let's test your trivial knowledge. How many gallons of water? is one inch of rain over an acre. I don't know. <laughs> a lot. You're supposed to know this stuff. A lot of gallons. 27,000 gallons. 27,000. Yeah. You should ask somebody from Nebraska. We don't talk about Nebraska corn on here. <laughs> <laughs> you got it on film. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it went so bad. Yeah, oh boy. That would hurt a little bit. Don't forget to turn your four wheel drive on, Grandpa. Well, if you would have fallen, I would have got it on film. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Grandpa. I'm going to ride with you. I, I didn't know you had steps. How am I going to get up there? How was it, John? Was she a horrible, horrible rider? Oh, uh, she was. Grandpa John was born on June 24th, 1941, to John and Ruth. He graduated high school in 1959 and then served his country honorably in the United States Army from 1961 until 1964. He was in the A-5th, stationed in Fort Leonard Wood during basic training, then going to Mannheim, Germany, in Fort Carson, Colorado. On May 5th, 1979, Grandpa John was united in marriage to Grandma Judy. John had been employed with International Harvest as a mechanic, as a car mechanic, as well as a truck driver in Central Iowa. He was a member of the Mid-Iowa Antique Power Association. Grandpa John was a longtime Chicago Cubs and Iowa State Cyclones fan. He enjoyed international harvester tractors, skiing, golfing, and farming. Most importantly, Grandpa John was the best husband and enjoyed watching his grandchildren grow. John is survived by his wife of 43 years, Grandma Judy, son, Marvin, and brother, Rick. 
stepchildren, my Aunt Tracy, my dad, Mike, Mary, Jess, and Dorothy. His grandchildren were Summer, me, Cooper, and Nate. John is preceded in death by his parents, John and Ruth, brother, Alan, and stepson, Don. Now, Grandpa didn't want to have a funeral. He wanted to have coffees and cookies at the golf course where he enjoyed spending several days a week during the summer golfing. So that's what we're going to end up doing. We're not going to have a funeral service right here in this video, but I wanted to share some of my favorite moments with Grandpa John. So Grandpa was always just sitting there. <coughs> he was doing that too. <laughs> <coughs> yes, he had COPD, so he coughed quite a bit. <laughs> when we were young, he's always reading the newspaper. Always reading the newspaper. If he was off work, he'd have a beer. He'd always smoke a cigarette with it. He'd always have his coffee. He was always just so patient and calm, never got riled up about anything. And Grandma would always threaten, when Grandpa John gets home, he'll spank you if you stay being bad. And I told Grandpa before he passed that I was honestly never scared of him, even when I was little. So it wasn't much of a threat to me when Grandma threatened that. I went golfing with Grandpa John a lot. It was always fun riding in his little Chevy Colorado pickup. We'd have golf clubs in the back. And they were smart, because when I was young, they would say, oh, Cole, you're so strong. You know, to, you know, I had to prove my strength every time I'd get the golf clubs out of the back for them. I didn't realize they just wanted me to get them out of the back. But riding back from the golf course, it's always a 90 degree day. Grandpa would have like an AM 530 station on, some really old country radio. And, He'd occasionally just sing a song under his breath while smoking a cigarette with the window that far cracked down and there's me over there dying trying to stick my head out the window so I can breathe. Probably my favorite moment with Grandpa John. A couple years ago Neva and I were at a rodeo. I'm sitting here and Neva's right beside me. Grandpa John's in front of me and Grandma Judy is in front of Neva. There's a lady on the other side of Grandma Judy smoking a cigarette. Grandpa smoked for probably 50 years before he quit. And this lady smoking a cigarette. Grandpa keeps looking over at her. <laughs> Next thing you know, Grandpa takes his rodeo pamphlet. He rolls it up. This is a thick one. It's like this thick. He rolls it up and he goes over. He leans across Grandma Judy and he goes to tap this lady. And he cocks it back and smacks this lady on the back of the head really hard. <laughs> and he's like, oh, ma'am, ma'am, uh, could you please put your cigarette out? They really bother my wife. And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, I, I can put it out. And she goes back to smoking it. And so Grandpa keeps looking over at her. The next thing up, my grandpa, I don't know how he did it. The fastest I've ever seen him move. But he leaves across Grandma Judy snipes the cigarette out of this lady's hand, takes it, puts it out on the bleacher, and goes back to watching the rodeo. Neva and I are just sitting there like, did that just really happen? Did... Never would have imagined that out of Grandpa John. But it was funny. Then during harvest, we didn't really care who people voted for, who worked for us. But you can get Grandpa John going pretty good if you got talking about Donald Trump. And so we'd intentionally just poke at him with stuff. And so when windows got real dusty, <laughs> we'd draw a picture on the window and then we'd write Trump on it. And you get Grandpa going, you get breathing hard, but we just did it on purpose because it was part of his pulmonary exercises for his COPD. So we were just help keeping him healthy by doing that. <laughs> we're gonna miss Grandpa John a lot. You now Grandma Judy's really gonna miss him. Grandpa John was Grandma Judy's best friend. They did everything together. And you can live with my Grandma Judy for 
over 40 years and be a sane person. I mean, that takes a special person. So this is just a, our memory to Grandpa John. He's gone, but he's not gone. All of you know, everything he's taught us, I, Grandma Judy and Grandpa John were uh, part of the, the people who raised me, Cooper and Summer. So you know, we, we spent a lot of time with them as kids. We're gonna miss them. There's a lot of things around the farm here that that we do that we remember him by. So, you know, we, we won't ever look at the gray semi the same. He liked the gray semi because it had a cat in it and it had decent power. But the Volvos he hated because <laughs> they had no power. <laughs> so, it, it's things like that. You, you look at a white semi, you think grandpa. You look at the gray semi, you think of grandpa. You look at the red semi, you really think of Grandpa because he absolutely hated that one because it was his dog. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who uh, prayed for Grandpa John and our family. We're we're gonna get through it. It's a it's a part of life. We were able to spend some time with Grandpa John before he passed. He was, hospice was there, but I was able to have some alone time with Grandpa and tell him how I felt. And, you know, he was he was still there enough where he knew what was going on, but he was you know, declining quickly. But Grandpa went peacefully and he's in a better place now.